Docker, 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 Docker. All right, who remembers the Docker song? Well, I know some of you remember it. It's been a while though. Today I've got three machines, two MacBook Air M2s and one, by popular request, MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip in it. This is the base model MacBook Pro, 14 inch. We've got a 24 gig um, MacBook Air M2 and the base model MacBook Air. It's there just for the heck of it. It's probably not gonna do so well in a Docker test or virtualization in general, but I'm just curious, that's why it's here. Now, if you're curious about my M1 MacBook Air tests, I'll link some videos down below, I've done that last year and all throughout the years. Let's continue with these new models. I wanna do two tests today. One is the getting started guide because everybody knows it, everybody's familiar with it, and you know how long it takes on your machine. There's two steps here, of course. When you do Docker run, it has to download some images. So I'm gonna do these individually. Sorry, Schwarzenegger, we, we don't need you today, buddy. But you'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> now the build is gonna be local, so at that point we're gonna be timing it. Now, as far as the resources uh, that I've allocated for Docker, they are slightly different. So let's have a look. And these are not defaults, by the way. I did change the resources and I've maxed out the resources as much as possible on each one of these machines. This base model MacBook Air only gets eight CPUs and eight gigabytes of memory. But the interesting thing is that these two machines right here, <laughs> I call this one the mini MacBook Pro because so far it's been doing pretty well. It's got a nice chip in it. It does have more memory than the MacBook Pro. So we'll see if that helps it out and I've maxed that out too. So we'll do getting started as the first test. And for the second test, that's gonna be this app right here, which is located on GitHub, Docker Samples Example Voting App. So what is this? Well, it's a more complex Docker setup that uses uh, Docker Compose and it has five images. There's a node app, there is a SQL database, there is a Redis cache, and there's a .NET worker and a voting app that's written in Python. So we got a mix of things and they're all gonna be spun up at the same time using Docker Compose. So I'm going to create a directory for my Docker tests and then I'm going to clone that repository. And uh, there it is, the example voting app. All right, I'll have that ready when the time comes. Let's kick things off with a getting started example. I'm going to uh, copy that command right from Docker desktop. There is the sample and paste it into my terminal and run it. And if we look at Docker desktop, now we've got an image, this one, Docker getting started. We have a container that's running. Well, that didn't take long at all on any one of these machines, but that's not really what the test is. Now I'm gonna run the build command and that's docker build t getting started dot. And I'm gonna add the time command at the beginning of that. I love being able to just copy this from one machine and paste it on the other machine. That's still something so useful. You know what? I could use Schwarzenegger here. All right, buddy. You're on. The Schwarzenegger. One, two, three. I love how it gives uh, the containers different names. This one is Strange Shirley. This one is Ecstatic Williams. And this one is Inspiring Clark. This is great now, but doing the tutorial doesn't actually give us the code. This tutorial actually lives on GitHub. So we can go to GitHub, Docker, getting started. And this is where it lives. So you can actually clone the code itself in the tutorial. So I'm gonna clone that and I'm gonna grab the code and run that from the code base. Let's have a look at that. All right, there's the Docker file and it will pull this image, but I already have the image downloaded because I ran the tutorial. Now that I have this locally, I can run the build command. That would be Docker build, Docker 101 tutorial, why not? And the period at the end. And let's do the same thing on all these. Let's go. Okay, there we go, there we go. The differences are gonna be pretty small because the dependencies it's downloading are really tiny. But we do have a result and it is an interesting one. And this might have to do with the chip. I don't know, <laughs> because we've got 17.9 seconds on the MacBook Pro and on the MacBook Air M2, we've got 12.5 seconds. And on the base model M2 MacBook Air, we got 12.3 seconds. So this is not a question of having more memory. This is not a very memory intensive test, but perhaps this can be attributed to the M2 chip. And if that's the case, that is a pretty big difference. So what's happening here, Chris? What do you think? The process of kicking off the build right there isn't particularly a memory intensive one, but it's more has everything to do with the processor and being able to run those processes. So the M2 processor has a bit more advanced architecture. And so it's you're just going to see more improvements and also 
uh, the one difference that I want to call out too that if the processes were long run and would were pinging the CPU at 100% for a long period of time, you'd see the M2, uh, the MacBook Airs really fall behind because they don't have a fan in them. And so you'll see that suddenly the, the processing power and uh, you know will scale off or back off uh, for heating concerns, whereas the M1 Pro would just sail past because of the active cooling. Gotcha. Let's go. We're kicking things off with the M2 MacBook Air, the upgraded model, just to see what that's going to be all about. Now, after this is done, I'm going to try to scale one of the instances to 100 to see how long that takes. OK, this one's done. M2 base model. Did you know that there was a VS Code open button? I didn't see that before. That's new, but that's pretty cool. You can open this project in VS Code right from here, from Docker Desktop. I'm going to click on it and see what happens. Hey, look at that. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, we don't need that right now. Let's run this on the MacBook Pro. Well, I don't know what to tell you, folks. The times are pretty much the same. We've got 45 seconds on the base model MacBook Air, 42 seconds on the upgraded MacBook Air, and 44 seconds on the MacBook Pro. And the difference there just could be attributed to network traffic network differences. Even though nothing else is running here, I'm not using the network, but still variations could cause that. I don't see a huge difference here. Now, if we take a look at uh, Docker desktop, you can expand the example voting app and you'll see that there's a bunch of containers that have been created and some of them are running. If we do pop open activity monitor though, here we'll see some differences, especially on the memory tab. And when we look at the memory tab here, you'll see that the MacBook Pro is using zero bytes of memory. The MacBook Air that's upgraded is using 39 megabytes, which is 039, eh, about the same. But the base model MacBook Air is going to show some struggling here because it's using pretty much all the memory that's available and it's using about a gigabyte of swap so far. And this is only one instance of each container. So just for fun, let's scale it up a little bit and see what happens. Usually during a development scenario, this is pretty much all you're gonna need. So right now we're seeing that these two machines will be handling it just fine. The MacBook Air base model is probably gonna struggle if you try to use the web or try to use your editor at this point you're gonna see some slowdowns and the experiment that I'm about to do is usually not something you'll do on a laptop anyway you'll probably deploy this if you want to scale this up to a hundred instances but what the heck let's just do it for fun anyway I'm gonna keep activity monitor running just so that we can keep an eye on it while we're doing this and here's the command I'm gonna use the same exact command time docker compose up dash D force recreate and I'm gonna add one more flag here and that's the scale flag and what I want to scale is the worker and I'm gonna set that to 100 what is this worker thing let's take a look at the code here and you can see that here are your apps and worker is just one of them with its own docker file this is the dotnet application that's going to be running as the worker process and this is the one we're going to scale to 100 you can scale a few of them if you wanted to but we're just going to do this one let's go you can see how many workers is spinning up right there and it's quite a lot is anything struggling here on the macbook air m2 not really what's going on here the air m2 looks like it started them up and they're running memory uses 20 gigabytes the m1 i don't know if it finished starting all of them up maybe it did but the times are a little bit strange i got 25.8 seconds on the base model macbook air 33 seconds on the upgraded macbook air and 13 seconds on this macbook pro i don't think so something doesn't seem right i don't think they actually started it's using only 11 gigabytes on the macbook pro let's have a look here docker desktop says there's only 56 containers running on the macbook pro uh 101 containers running on the macbook air base and 103 on the macbook air upgraded i don't know what's going on folks i ran the same command but i will run this one more time just to see if that helps it recreating recreating we got errors that's kind of too bad let's see if cleaning this up will help us I'm gonna delete all these images. Okay, we've got a clean system. You know what, just in case, I'll do Docker system prune over here. Yes, let's try this again. Docker compose up, let's see. Now this is using the network because it's repulling the images, but I'm not running any other tests, so it's okay. Hey, these kinds of things happen in the real world. So there we go. The video is edited, but 
I'm keeping this in because, well, you might experience the same issues. Creating, 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 created. Now we need to see started. All right. <laughs> I think that was clean. It says running 100 out of, uh, oh, running 99 out of 104. What happened to that last one? Did we just lose one? Anyway, close enough. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on these two. I'll be right back. I'm waiting. It's happening. It's looking better. But we do have one struggling machine. If you think I'm wearing underwear, this is not underwear, it's shorts, all right? I know some people in the comments said, are you wearing underwear? First of all, I'm at home, I could wear underwear, but these are shorts, it's okay. All right, folks, we got some results and these look to be pretty good as far as the cleanliness of the test. They all seem to be somewhat working. Well, okay, here's the result, ready? We have 88 running containers on the base model, MacBook Air. We have 97 running containers on the upgraded MacBook Air, and we have 99 running on the MacBook Pro. I don't know why there's that difference, but there is. Maybe it thinks like, hey, you got enough containers. Why am I gonna give you 13 extra ones? You don't need them. Psh, don't worry about it. Here are the results as far as the timing goes of those builds. 59 seconds on the base model M2 MacBook Air, 45 seconds, 0.9, on the upgraded MacBook Air, and one minute, eight seconds on the MacBook Pro. The extra RAM is probably helping out this MacBook Air, but how does that explain that the base model MacBook Air is faster than the MacBook Pro? Well, could it be the M2 chip? Yeah, I think it could be. Let's have a look at Activity Monitor one last time here. We've got uh, zero bytes used by swap on the MacBook Pro. Again, 39 megabytes, barely anything used by the MacBook Air M2. The upgraded model, the most memory pressure, and it's not looking so great for the MacBook Air base model. It was struggling even with the getting started example, so it's gonna be struggling even more now. 1.8 gigabytes used of swap. The base model MacBook Air only has a single NAND chip for the rent for the hard drive for the SSD. Yeah, that's right. Whereas the upgraded one has the two uh, NAND chips for the SSD. So even when it gets to swap on the upgraded MacBook Air, it's still not as slow as the base model. So all in all, when you're comparing the MacBook Air base model versus the upgraded one, the swap is even slower. So when you get that memory contention and you start, or memory pressure, as, as you see in the activity monitor, uh, and you hit the swap on the disk, then you're gonna see even slower results, even though the base model MacBook Air started fewer, which you would expect like, oh, some of them failed out pretty early on, right? Like, so you would expect it to be faster because of fewer started containers. It's actually still slower because you hit that memory cap and you hit the swap and that swap is slow in comparison to the swap space for the SSD on the upgraded 24 gig MacBook M2 MacBook Air. Yeah. Now, realistically, how often do people start up this many containers on their local laptop? pretty unrealistic, right? Unless you're a researcher, like unless you're doing something with where you're trying to break the parallel processes or trying to start this up. No, you're, you know, if you're doing local stuff at most, you'll run like five to 10 if you're really trying to push the limits, but like no one's ever running this much locally that I don't know what exactly is happening. And it's just, like I said, it's evident that there is some resource contention that's going on. If you're gonna be doing virtualization, better get the upgraded RAM model. You kind of knew this was coming, but the test had to be done, especially between the MacBook Air M2 and the MacBook Pro base model. They are pretty close. I would say that this is a definitive result as far as uh, upgrading your MacBook Air, if you were thinking about doing that, but it's not so cut and dry between the MacBook Air with 24 gigs of RAM and the base model MacBook Pro. More tests to come on those two. By the way, I wanna take a moment to thank the members of this channel. I've had the membership up for about six months now, and some folks have the six month badge on their names. Thanks to those folks and to those that join in between. And if you wanna join and support the channel as well, there's a join button over there. Otherwise, if you subscribe, I'll be happy too. Thank you so much. And uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Schwarzenegger will be back next time. See y'all later. Have a good one.